Many attended today's funeral services at Bethel Synagogue in Margate for 47-year-old April Kaufman. Mother's Day 2012, the town of Linwood, New Jersey, turns out for one of its own, complete with a cortege of veterans leading their champion, April Kaufman, to her final resting place. The well-known local radio host, who was shot multiple times and discovered dead in her Linwood home last Thursday. It was like a state procession for April Kaufman. No one could believe what had happened. She just was so caring, so compassionate. She just was an inspiration to everybody. The loss heaviest for April's daughter, Kim. I miss her calling me nonstop, all the time. I miss her laugh. I miss her smile. I miss her infinite wisdom, because she really was my rock. After the mourning came the murmuring. Sometimes talk is cheap, even in wealthy towns. This is a delicate question, but there were questions about whether your mom was having affairs. You know, they had a very unhealthy relationship, the both of them. And I will just say that there were indiscretions on both sides of the fence. And I'll leave it at that. Did it concern you that maybe somebody that she had been involved with could have killed her? No, but I certainly provided those people's names to the police and I allowed them to do their due diligence. While the community is in shock and a Washington rumor and innuendo, listen to this, April's final radio broadcast, where she sounds like a woman who thinks her days are numbered. And my bottom line is, if, if nothing else, of my legacy of leaving a um, you know, really beautiful daughter and two grandchildren on this planet, I really hope to God that people, you know, hey, I could get a flyover at my funeral now. <laughs> you listen back to that, and you think, did she have a premonition? It's kind of like she was trying to tell us something, I believe. In those early days after her mom's death, there's one thing gnawing at Kim. One person she's curiously not getting consolation from? Her stepdad, Dr. Jim Kaufman. Dr. James Kaufman was a very well-respected and well-regarded member of this community. But to Kim, stepfather Jim, was a very different person. He was very cold to me, always kept me at an arm's length. Literally, just look at the pained body language in this video taken on Kim's wedding day. One, two, and three. There you go. Take a close look. He steps into the scene. He smiles one time for the camera to flash. Then he goes back to a very taciturn demeanor and steps out. No hugging, no kissing, no warmth, nothing. You would be in the dining room, I would be talking to my mom, and he would come and turn the lights off and just walk out of the room. He controlled her cash flow and oh, yes. how much money she could spend? Oh, yes. And sometimes even calling her, who are you with? Where are you? And just two months before April's murder, it seems the bloom was officially off the rose of her nearly 10-year marriage. Kim recalling a lunch where her mother confides she's had enough. She talked about that she really needed to start aligning herself and getting herself in a good spot to be able to leave. I think that he had made it clear to her that she wasn't going to divorce him and take half of his empire. That was his famous words. Did you get any feeling that your mom might have been in any kind of danger? She had made it clear over the years that he had threatened to kill her several times. but would always follow up with. He doesn't have the guts to do it. Though Jim is not named a suspect, some might say he begins acting like one. Within days of April's body being found, Jim hires a lawyer. Not only a lawyer, but the lawyer, a mob lawyer. Ed Jacobs, one of the biggest legal names in Atlantic County. He's even defended Bill Cosby in one of his sex assault accusations. He loves defending high-profile criminal cases. His walls and his office are covered with news clips of himself. One possible reason he's not named a suspect? He's got an airtight alibi. That's him entering a local convenience store around the same time his wife is being gunned down. Authorities are not releasing details, but it appears that Kaufman's shooting death was not random. I meet him in a restaurant, and he says to me, let me tell you something, I have a very good attorney, and I've been advised to not speak to anybody about this. He's like, you might need to really start to realize that this is never going to be solved. And I said, well, 
I'm not going to realize that, I said, because I will never stop finding out. And I walked away, and I never spoke to him ever again. As the months drag on, Kim says the only cold shoulder icier than Jim's is the one she's getting from then Atlantic County Prosecutor Jim McLean. I had several meetings with him, and he would just say it was active and open and not really say much more. Did you get the impression that he was determined to get no. to the bottom of this? No. Then, on the one-year anniversary of April's murder, many turn out for a candlelight vigil, including so many vets she made her cause. Noticeably absent, Dr. Jim Kaufman. He marks the milestone another way. We discovered that he was getting ready to auction off all of April's belongings and um, hadn't given anything to Kim. How crushing was that for you? Beyond, because the things that I asked for that belonged to my mother were family heirlooms or possibly Disney coffee mugs. With her mother and all those mementos lost, Kim tries to adjust to a new normal while raising her two young sons and holding down her job as a pharmaceutical sales rep. Marching through every single day, waking up with another day of hopelessness while trying to keep that glimmer of hope alive is, is a very tricky thing to do. Yet while life for Kim seems hopelessly on pause, for Jim Kaufman, it's full speed ahead. Just 15 months after his wife's murder, he ties the knot again. He remarries Carol Weintraub. When did that start? Now, the version we've gotten is that they started dating after April was found murdered. Now that's some romance. April's friends and family were devastated, and they felt like it was a slap in the face, but the people who support Jim Kaufman say, you know, he's a widow and he's moving on with his life. But Dr. Kaufman's next move sets off a chain of events that pushes Kim out of limbo. He went after my mom's life insurance policy. And your reaction? No way. Because you know what? This is my only attempt to maybe be able to get some answers and the truth maybe would start to come out. Now it's Kim's turn to lawyer up. Believing Jim is the killer, she files a wrongful death suit against her stepdad to keep him from getting her mom's $600,000 life insurance policy. I have no choice to respond and to begin to fight for what I know is right. The most significant kind of civil lawsuit you can have is a wrongful death case. Coming up, a daughter undaunted, and the dynamic duo attorneys she hires begin digging into the case, and what they say they uncover is shocking. We were talking to people that were critical witnesses to us that had not spoken to the prosecutor's office. And their chance to grill the grieving good doctor. He was under oath in a civil deposition. They could ask him anything. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.